Are we connected? Yes. Okay, good to go. Sorry about that for those of you who had already uh, tuned in. I just got notified that the video feed wasn't active, so it seems to be uh, running now. So uh, for those of you who just uh, tuned in on the later side, uh, I had just gotten started. So I'm just going to take it back from the beginning one more time. I'm Carl Henriksen, and I'm an orthopedic foot and ankle specialist here at OSMS. Uh, so I'm an orthopedic surgeon and I uh, have gone through the full orthopedic training. I take care of traumatic injuries of the upper and lower extremities, but I chose to undergo uh, additional training, uh, a foot and ankle surgery fellowship, so that I could subspecialize in the foot and ankle, which is an extremely complex and interesting to me part of the body. And as many of you may know, it's an extremely important part of the body for, for function and getting you through your daily activities. So let's dive right in. I'm going to talk about some common foot and ankle injuries, um, what these injuries involve, and uh, what are some of the steps that can be taken to treat them. So uh, first I'm going to mention is uh, ankle sprain. So a as all of you know, ankle sprains are a common injury. Uh, many of them are mild. The pain gets better within a, a day or two after you walk it off. And, you know, for ankle sprains like that, uh, the best treatment is rest, icing, elevation, and uh, compression. So uh, there's a mnemonic for that, uh, rice, if you'd like to remember that. But that's what you can do at home if you have kind of a mild ankle sprain and it uh, feels like it's likely to be better in a day or two and you're going to try and walk it off. Uh, most mild ankle sprains do go that way, but uh, ankle sprains run the gamut and there are moderate ankle sprains that can really put you out for a while and, and there are severe ankle sprains that can be quite a severe and long-lasting problem. So in general with ankle sprains, uh, if you're having difficulty walking, if the pain has lasted more than two or three days, or you're having uh, difficulty doing the activities that you need to do as part of your daily life on account of the injury, then I recommend uh, coming in for an evaluation. And uh, so what is an ankle sprain? An ankle sprain is uh, typically a twisting injury to the ankle in which the ligaments uh, that support the ankle have been injured. Ligaments are tough fibrous tissue that support the joint and keep the bones on either side of the joint moving properly. They can be damaged to varying extents or sometimes fully torn in an ankle sprain. So part of the evaluation that I would do for an ankle sprain in the office would be to determine which, which ligaments uh, might be injured and, and to what extent based on my uh, clinical examination and then formulate a plan for rehabbing that ankle. Uh, the good news about ankle sprains is that the vast majority do ultimately respond to rehab measures uh, including bracing and physical therapy. Um, and uh, that's that's uh, the gist of it for ankle sprains. Now we're going to move on and uh, we're going to talk about tendonitis in the foot and ankle. Uh, tendons uh, are parts of your body that connect the muscles which generate pulling force to your bones. They're made of tough fibrous uh, tissue and they're subject to wear and tear throughout the day. Your body is always repairing them but sometimes the damage can accumulate and then tendonitis develops. And uh, tendonitis can affect any, any tendon uh, around your foot or ankle. There are tendons that move your foot and ankle in every direction, up, down, side to side. The most common I would, that I would see is probably the Achilles tendon uh, developing tendonitis. And that typically comes on with pain in the back of your leg, either at the heel where the Achilles tendon attaches or right up, up above it and that can come along with swelling uh, and tenderness. Um, and if you do develop Achilles tendonitis, 
and the pain is lingering, it's important to get proactive. It can be uh, a long-standing issue that uh, is a bit slow to recover once it gets established. So if you feel something that might be Achilles tendonitis coming on, pain in the back of your leg, uh, like I said, it's good to get proactive. Um, the good news about Achilles tendonitis, again, just like ankle sprains, and, and this applies to tendonitis of the foot and ankle in general, is that the vast majority of cases respond well to the uh, right rehab regimen, which would typically be a combination of physical therapy or exercises that you could do at home uh, together with uh, orthotics or, uh, or bracing and anti-inflammatories. Um, now, in, in more severe cases or cases of an acute injury, Beyond tendonitis, a, a tendon rupture can occur, and that's when a tendon isn't just irritated and inflamed, but it tears completely from end to end, and you lose all the pulling strength of the muscle associated with that tendon. And uh, those are obviously injuries that warrant immediate attention. Uh, you, you'll typically experience a painful pop. So that's a situation where I would come in for evaluation right away and uh, you know typically uh, if the suspicion is for tendonitis uh, scans would be done to confirm that diagnosis and oftentimes the treatment would be a tendon repair oftentimes but not always uh, there are nuances to the treatment of tendon ruptures uh, depending on what the particular tendon is and depending on the circumstances of that particular patient so sometimes even a tendon rupture can be rehabbed, but uh, in, in either case, that's certainly something that warrants an in-person evalu in -person evaluation. Another very common issue that I see is plantar fasciitis, and that is common in, in people from most every uh, age group. Uh, I have plenty of athletes who get plantar fasciitis after engaging in rigorous training. I get, I see many people who spend a lot of time working on their feet who develop it uh, as a result of that. And I, I see people who uh, develop plantar fasciitis just as a result of long-term wear and tear. And plantar fasciitis typically manifests with pain on the bottom of the heel. Uh, some classic features of plantar fasciitis are pain that occurs with your first step out of bed in the morning when you've been resting. And, uh, and uh, gets, it's typically relieved with rest, but comes back again once you try to get up. Uh, good news about plantar fasciitis, again, similar to some of these other issues, is the vast majority of cases do respond well to the appropriate uh, regimen of physical therapy and other treatment modalities. It's, an, it's uncommon that surgery or, or something uh, more, more invasive is required, but it is important to get evaluated early. Therefore, you can bring in those um, non-operative measures that might help and avoid a potentially bigger problem down the road. Metatarsalgia is actually another issue that I see quite a lot of. Um, that one might, that term might not be so familiar to some of you, but um, whereas plantar fasciitis is uh, typically manifests with pain in the bottom of the heel, metatarsalgia is an issue uh, that manifests with pain in the ball of the foot or the bottom of the forefoot, and uh, it's a common issue. It's typically due to mechanical overload, and uh, like plantar fasciitis, I see it in. Uh, you know, athletes, I see it in uh, people who spend a lot of time on their feet or just people who have had more wear and tear to that area. It is a common problem. And just like plantar fasciitis, it's important to uh, initiate measures early on to try and offload the affected area and get it rehabbed uh, so that, it, it, you know, it doesn't become a bigger issue. Uh, on top of that, uh, I see many fractures, ankle fractures, um, fractures in the foot and ankle. There are 28 bones in the foot and ankle and really any of those bones can be involved. Uh, that's obviously an issue where 
you would want to come in. We would do x-rays and uh, treat that appropriately depending on uh, what the uh, what the fracture uh, shows in the x-rays. Sometimes that's something that can heal uh, with immobilization and uh, staying off of the fracture while it heals. Sometimes that uh, those injuries can require surgery. Uh, stress fractures are a subset of fractures that I see more commonly in athletes. And uh, those fractures are important to identify early. So uh, if you're an athlete or somebody who spends a lot of time uh, on your feet, or you've had a sudden increase in your training intensity, and you experience uh, pain along with swelling overlying uh, one of the bones of your foot and ankle, that could be a stress fracture. And uh, this is another issue where if it's identified early, it can be treated with offloading uh, so that the bone can be allowed to heal. Uh, if not identified early, sometimes those stress fractures can worsen and, and progress to an issue. It's still often manageable, but um, more challenging. So that if you have a suspicion of a stress fracture, that's a a good good reason to come in and, and get evaluated. All right. Now, uh, another injury I see uh, on a fairly regular basis is something called an osteochondral lesion. So that's a area of damage to the cartilage and often to the uh, underlying bone at a joint. Now, the cartilage is the soft uh, low friction layer that allows for painless motion and gliding at your joints. And sometimes as a result of maybe some of these other injuries that I discussed, uh, such as an ankle sprain or a fracture, that cartilage can be damaged too. Uh, sometimes these osteochondral lesions are simply found and they can't always be pinned to a certain injury that brought it on. But, uh, you know, sometimes we do see on x-ray or MRI that there is one small area of damage to an otherwise good looking joint. And, and if that's the case, that can be causing pain in that joint. And, uh, you know, it, uh, that's another issue where if we identify that early, sometimes if it's a injury that happened recently, that can heal up with immobilization. Sometimes it's necessary to go in uh, to that joint with a scope and try and stimulate more cartilage to grow in that area. Now, sometimes in people who are having joint pain, it's uh, more of a widespread issue than, than a small area that's been damaged. And when the damage has kind of progressed throughout an entire joint, that's typically what we see with arthritis. And uh, arthritis can happen for a variety of reasons in the foot and ankle. Sometimes it's osteoarthritis as a result of uh, wear and tear over the years or following a uh, injury that happened in the past perhaps. Sometimes there's an inflammatory condition like rheumatoid arthritis that can damage the joint. But whatever the cause, arthritis leads to pain in the affected joint, stiffness, and uh, it can really uh, limit a patient's function and the activities that you're able to participate in. So it's a big, it's a big problem for many people. Uh, and uh, treatment ranges from bracing and uh, anti-inflammatory medications uh, geared at minimizing the pain to your surgical options. And uh, you know, traditionally, the the mainstay of surgery for advanced ankle arthritis has been an ankle fusion, or arthrodesis is the technical term for it, where uh, you get rid of the painful joint by uh, essentially removing that damaged cartilage and allowing the bone to grow together from one side of that joint to the other. So the, the painful rubbing of damaged cartilage at the joint is eliminated. The trade-off for that is that you do lose motion at that joint. Uh, but that certainly is one option for attaining pain relief. Uh, one development that's been uh, exciting in recent years and, uh, you know, is that a, a new option has uh, become available and 
total ankle arthroplasty is something that I offer. So just like with a uh, with with the knee or a hip, with other joints of the body, uh, before those uh, total knee replacements and total hip replacements that we do now were, were developed, the, the mainstay of surgical treatment for knee arthritis, for example, was uh, a knee fusion where the knee was made uh, stiff in order to get rid of that joint pain. And then as technology progressed, uh, knee replacements became uh, better and better such that now uh, the knee replacement is at absolutely the mainstay and it's it's rare that a, a knee fusion is done and I think we it's a similar situation underway with the ankle the technology of ankle replacement has progressed to the point where it is an excellent alternative to an ankle fusion it's a motion sparing option so it does preserve more of that natural motion of the ankle joint. And uh, it's an excellent option for many patients and I'm excited to be able to bring it to the table. So uh, th this for me is one of the exciting things about being a foot and ankle surgeon is that for uh, patients who are dealing with ankle arthritis, I can bring forward uh, new and exciting uh, technologies like this uh, that can, they can provide a great benefit. So uh, total ankle arthroplasty is a great option there too, and, and it's something that I'm excited about. Uh, moving beyond arthritis, uh, I see many patients uh, who, are, who have diabetes and who have various issues with their uh, foot or ankle on account of that, um, and whether these be issues with um, ulcers that can develop or, or um, or, or, or what you may have, I'm happy to take care of that. Uh, on top of that, there are various deformity, deformities that can occur in the foot and ankle. Patients can have trouble due to an arch that's too high or too low. Uh, bunions can develop, and uh, the other toes can form hammer toes. These are all issues that can be painful, and uh, all issues that I, uh, that, I, that I take care of, and I'm always happy to help with. So uh, I think that runs the gamut there. That's a uh, quick overview that I, I hope helps for, for some of you uh, tuning in. So now I'm going to move on to the questions that I've received. So the first of these was what type of conditions do I see? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The first of these is uh, what is OSMS doing to help keep patients safe during the pandemic? So let me say that we're doing temperature checks for all patients upon entering the building, also for all guests and team members. We do have a mask policy in place for all patients, guests, and team members as well so that we can all stay safe. Uh, generally, there is a no visitor policy, but we do make an exception for uh, anybody who needs special assistance or also minors. We're just trying to keep the overall number of people down to what is essential. We have uh, increased our disinfecting, sanitizing, and, and cleaning protocols. And uh, we are uh, asking that our patients uh, respect social distancing. And we have signage to this effect in the reception area. Additionally, we are offering telemedicine visits uh, for our established patients who would like to uh, discuss their issues and update us with their progress and move forward uh, with management, but would prefer not to come in in person. On to the next question, what type of conditions do I see? I, I hope that was answered with, uh, with the talk that I led with on uh, common foot and ankle injuries, but uh, to make it easy, I see any and all issues involving the foot and ankle. So uh, if you're having uh, foot and ankle pain uh, and uh, you're looking for answers, you'd like to do something more about it, uh, definitely come in and, and see me and I would be happy to help with that. My next question is how do I get rid of my plantar fasciitis? That's an excellent question. So, um, if you're having plantar fasciitis, which is that 
pain, which manifests with pain on the bottom of your heel, typically bad pain when you take your first step out of bed in the morning. Uh, you know, the best approach is to actually uh, approach it from multiple different directions. So there's plantar fascia stretching, and that's key. You do that by uh, bending your ankle upwards so that you feel that stretch in the back of your uh, Achilles, in the back of your calf or your leg. But then you want to go one step forward, uh, further and grasp your toes, pull your toes upwards too, and that's a plantar fascia specific stretch. So if you do that, you should be able to actually feel that tightness uh, in your plantar fascia, like a tight cord in the bottom of your arch. And you want to do that stretch every day. Um, you want to try and offload the heel as much as possible. So uh, there are kind of uh, a whole range of gel type orthotics, soft orthotics for the heel that are helpful for that. And it's helpful to massage the plantar fascia. And the best way to do that is to take a frozen plastic water bottle so that it's filled with ice, put it on the ground and really work it into the heel. Uh, Anti-inflammatories are helpful if, if you can tolerate those, if you can take those. Uh, medications such as, you know, ibuprofen or naproxen, that is. And uh, finally, night splinting can help if you have that pain when you take that first step out of bed in the morning. Uh, there's something called a night splint, which you wear while you sleep, and that helps the plantar fascia heal. So those are all measures that can be taken at home to help with plantar fasciitis. Um, you know, if that fails, there are many other modalities that I can bring into play. So um, if plantar fasciitis is giving you trouble, definitely feel free to come in and see me. My next question, are my shoes causing my bunion? That's a good question, and uh, I, I'm going to give you a, a nuanced answer. Uh, they may be contributing. So, uh, but certainly not the only factor. Uh, in terms of what causes bunions, there is a large uh, component that's passed down in families. So if you look across the generations, um, there are many families where bunions just occur in every generation. And that's a big part of it too. But if you look at shoes that have a very tight and narrow toe box, you can almost imagine that it's hard to fit your foot in there without your big toe being pushed over um, into that bunion position. Um, you know, a bunion isn't just a bump at the base of your big toe, but it, it occurs doing, due to your big toe being pushed outwards. So if you have very tight dress shoes that do that, they, they could be contributing. Do I see workers' compensation injuries? I certainly do. I'm happy uh, to see workers' compensation injuries. I see a good deal of them, and uh, we have people uh, here at the office at OSMS who, who actually specialize in uh, helping out with that type of issue, too. So when it comes to handling that paperwork in the back office, uh, we are all uh, geared up for that and happy to help. Next question. Someone said I might have hammer toe. What is that and how can I treat it? So a hammer toe uh, is a deformity of one of the toes where it's become abnormally bent. Uh, if I can kind of, dem for those of you who are watching the video, I'll demonstrate with my uh, fingers here. So if you could imagine, you know, your toes, your second through fifth toes have two knuckles just like my finger here. So when a hammer toe is bent at this knuckle, the one that's closest to your foot, uh, that's considered a hammer toe. Um, but uh, there, there are hammer toes, mallet toes, claw toes. Uh, from a pr practical perspective, even though there are um, medical nuances from my perspective, uh, you as a patient might think of many of those issues as being the same thing. It's, it's, got, it's an abnormal bending of the toe. And... Uh, you know, it can happen due to your, your tendons uh, tightening up or contracting abnormally at the same time as other supporting structures of the toe uh, loosen up abnormally such that that bend can develop. And uh, how can you treat it? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, to, so to be honest, uh, 
I think treatment is best geared at minimizing or eliminating any pain along with it and stretching out your foot to avoid uh, progression, avoid it getting worse. I think once it's developed, uh, it's rare that that toe ever straightens out on its own. So if a hammer toe has developed and it is causing you pain, uh, despite you know wearing shoes with a wide and deep toe box to accommodate it, then uh, there are surgical options to straighten out that toe as well. So uh, I hope that answers the question. Are flip-flops bad for my feet? I would say no, not in and of themselves. If, if, you're, if your feet are, are not having any issues in particular, and you're not having any pain walking in flip-flops, I don't think they're bad for your feet. But I will say there are a variety of foot issues that can come up where, you know, if that's something we're dealing with, I would recommend shoes other than flip-flops so that we could potentially keep pressure off of an affected area and get some relief. And that's on a case-to-case -case basis. But I don't think that across the board flip-flops are something to be avoided. My feet hurt right away in the morning. Do you know what might be causing that? Well, it really depends on where the pain is uh, located as well as a number of other issues. Um, if it's on the bottom of your heel, it could be plantar fasciitis. If it's on the back of your heel, it could be the Achilles tendon. But those aren't the only two issues that can cause pain first thing in the morning. It's not uncommon, so um, I can't give a definite answer to that question. But if that's an issue that you're dealing with, I would be happy to take a look in the office, and that's certainly something we could sort out. What are the signs of arthritis in your ankles? Uh, the big one is pain at the ankle joint, and that's, that can be a pain deep within the ankle joint, pain all around it, sometimes to the inside or the outside if, if you have more arthritis on one side or the other, but pain at the ankle joint, um, stiffness along with that pain, sometimes there's popping or clicking in the joint, and some degree of swelling. Uh, so that is how ankle arthritis uh, manifests. And uh, if those are symptoms that you're experiencing uh, and you were to come in, then that diagnosis could be confirmed with an x-ray that would uh, show arthritis in the ankle. Next question, can foot or ankle problems cause problems with other joints? Well, they can contribute would be my answer and they can aggravate problems that are there. And uh, when you're walking with an abnormal gait, then uh, your other joints can be subject to abnormal forces. You know, too much weight, uh, born in the wrong way, and that can aggravate an issue. So, so if you're limping on account of a foot and ankle problem, then that can certainly uh, aggravate uh, other issues or, or even cause uh, issues with back pain etc. So, so yes. Can my diabetes be causing my foot pain? Uh, yes, in, in an in a indirect sense and through a multiple, multiple different ways. So diabetes doesn't directly cause foot pain in and of itself. In other words, um, people with diabetes uh, do not have to be living with foot pain. Um, but diabetes can cause a number of issues that, that are painful. So diabetic neuropathy, which is abnormal nerve function as a result of the diabetes, can sometimes be painful. Uh, on top of that, diabetes puts you at increased risk for a number of other foot and ankle issues, uh, you know, such as hammer toes, for example, that uh, can be painful. And um, uh, that's just two examples. There are, are many more ways in which the diabetic uh, foot can become painful. I, all the issues that happen to the non-diabetic foot can happen to diabetics as well. So if, if there's foot pain there, you know, there's something wrong. And, uh, you know, especially in patients with diabetes, that should be evaluated. I think uh, 
it's important to be proactive uh, in patients with diabetes before an issue that's more manageable can become something that's uh, more difficult to deal with or more progressed. A couple more questions here. I have developed a shooting type pain in the middle of my left foot, more towards the inside of the foot, about the middle of the foot. It is not always present and seems to get worse later in the day. I do wear orthotics and pretty sure a metatarsal pad would help. It has in the past. I'm just wondering if this could be some type of arthritis or maybe a bone issue. So one of the important things, if this is your situation, is to kind of tease out where, where exactly the pain is. And uh, you mentioned a metatarsal pad that is often used in uh, metatarsalgia or, or to keep uh, pressure off of a neuroma in the forefoot. So if this pain, which you say is in the middle of the foot, is really in the, in the forefoot, then that might be the case. But if it's truly in the middle of, of your arch, then I'm not sure a metatarsal pad would be the best thing to help. This one might warrant an in-person evaluation to kind of better tease out what's causing this pain and then we can formulate a uh, treatment plan. I have another question. I broke my big toe about eight weeks ago. I had a boot on for six weeks. I am still having pain and swelling. Should I be worried? So what I would say there is that um, bone healing takes a minimum of, of eight weeks or two months. Sometimes soreness lingers longer than that. But if I were treating you for for a fracture I would get x-rays at this point uh, and I think it's warranted to uh, check on the fracture at this point and see if it's healed make sure it's healed in a good position uh, so that we could confidently uh, answer that question and move forward I'm gonna see if there are any additional questions here Okay, I have arthritis on top of my right foot. It swells and is very painful. What can be done? So if this arthritis is on top of the midfoot area, in other words, not right at the base of the toes, but more at the, the top of the foot uh, in the middle of the arch, uh, then that would be midfoot arthritis and some of the measures that could be taken for that are uh, wearing the right type of shoes. So you would want to wear shoes with a good arch support to take some of the weight off of that uh, midfoot that's arthritic. You'd want to have a stiff sole in those shoes and ideally what's called a rocker bottom which is uh, somewhat of a rounded bottom so that you can roll forward from heel to toe and it kind of propels you forward and takes a little bit of load off your midfoot as you're walking. Uh, what also helps is to lace the shoes loose a little bit more loosely to keep pressure off that area. And there are some, uh, you know, anti-inflammatories uh, type medications that can help with arthritis pain in general too. So I hope that answers the question. Uh, but again, I would I'd be happy to get X-rays. We could confirm a diagnosis like that and and form a personalized uh, treatment plan if that's your issue. All right. Well, thank you all for joining me this evening. I uh, hope you enjoyed learning about common foot and ankle injuries and the conditions that we treat at OSMS. Remember, if you're experiencing pain, discomfort, or an injury that might warrant a visit to OSMS, you can always request an appointment on our website or give us a call. Thank you again, and have a good night.